Hi, my name is Rob Nelson. I am the author of the SQLworks project as well as Sagebox. And this really is about how keywords can be kind of cool and solve a few problems that we run into with functions that use a lot of parameters. In this video, I'm showing using keywords for functions like Drawbox here instead of, say, default parameters or other methods when we have a lot of things that we can specify, but we don't want to specify them all at once. We just want to specify maybe one or two or more, but definitely not all of them every time we call the function. So here we have our nice rotating rectangle with just two keywords. Now notice this black and blue gradient. I'm going to talk about that in just a second. So now with two self-documenting descriptive keywords, border, color, and angle, we've been able to specify what we want. And with angle, we can just add once every time we do the angle on the vertical resync and get a rotating rectangle. We can actually put plus equal one inside of the draw box. It was just split for clarity in this example. So remember when I said to look at the black and blue gradient. So Sagebox has its own keywords. It's the same package. It's just using a different form. And so here we have the op name space and the BG color. And we just specify black and blue. And so it's just another good example of using keywords. But for now, let's focus on Drawbox and how this is used with the SQLworks project. So let's look at what we're solving with the keywords. Let's go ahead and look at the prototype of this Drawbox function. And what you can see is that we have the required parameters, the window, the X and the Y, and the size. And then we have kind of a nice declaration for our keywords, and that's all we have. So for all of our keywords, we just have the one keyword declaration. In the next video, I show how we get all this to work with the sequence project, but for now, I'm just focusing on using the function itself. But if we didn't have the keywords, what other methods could we use to get these parameters in here? So let's explore a couple. One way to do it is with default parameters and standard optional. I have another project that does the same thing without the keywords, and it uses exactly that. It uses standard optional. And so, as you can see with standard optional, we're changing one thing at the end, and we're putting a bunch of null ops in. So when we look at the prototype, you can see that that last thing that we're changing turns out to be the default anyway, but pretend we're flipping it around and it's true or something. And so we can just specify standard null up without having to know what the defaults are, which is really a nice thing about standard optional. And so when I run it with the defaults, I just get the default behavior. And then if I want to change the border color, if I know the position of it, I can just enter, say, pan color white and run it. And you can see now that the border is white. So if I just want to set the last option for an open box, standard optional is nice because I don't need to know all the defaults. I can just set it to true and run it, and now I have an open box. And so that's really nice. Standard optional is really nice in this regard that I don't need to know all the defaults. But let's say I have a number of things I want to add, such as a crosshatch, a crosshatch size, an angle, and maybe a number of other things down the line. Suddenly, I have to know position where all of these nullups are and what they mean. And it can get really hard to deal with when I'm making a function call. Another way we can deal with it without standard optional is just to put in the defaults inside of the header here, the prototype. So we just set them as defaults. And then when we go to use the function, we need to know all of the defaults before we can get to the actual value that we want to set. So standard optional is a pretty good way to go in these situations where we have a lot of options and we only want to use one or more at any given time. Another way to do it is what we see in the industry a lot, and that's where we create an object so we can set just the things we want to set. So here, let's say we want to set the border color, and we also want to set the open box flag on the end. With our object, we can just say box dot set open box, and then we can also say box dot set border color, and that way we're only referencing the things we want to change. And then we call box dot draw box to draw the box. The problem with this method is that as we use more boxes and circles and controls and windows, we have a lot more interface code than actual code and it gets hard to read. So this isn't necessarily the preferred option either. So let's go back to the original program we had and explore some of the advantages we get using keywords. With keywords, we get a nice clean interface. So when I look at the function for Drawbox, I have my required items, the window, X, Y, and size. And then I just have the one declaration for the keyword. So when I enter Drawbox as I'm typing it out, it shows me the prototype that gives me that nice clean interface. For the keywords, I only need to specify the keywords that I need. Here I can do DKW border color, but I don't need DKW here because I'm saying using namespace DKW up here. It doesn't really matter. We can use either way. The main thing is that I only need to specify border color, open box, and angle because that's what I'm using. And I don't have to worry about defaults and I don't need to know what they are. Another nice thing is that the IntelliSense will tell us what these keywords do. So when I select border color from the pick list, it will document it for me. So when I'm entering the keyword on the function name, I can enter a partial keyword and it'll bring up the pick list and then show me what all of these keywords do. 
Keywords are also self-documenting. This line of code, for example, is pretty obvious what it does. And if we compare it to the standard optional line, we don't exactly know what's going on here. We know we're setting something, but we have to look at the prototype. In comparison, the keyword version tells us exactly what we want to do. We're setting a border color, we're setting the open status of the box, and then we're also setting an angle. And if we don't know what the keywords do, we can just enter the namespace and get the pick list and get the documentation from there. Functions that use keywords can have as many keywords as they want without changing the interface. So in this case, I can add a crosshatch, crosshatch size, and it still doesn't change the interface and keeps it very clean. That also means that we can grow the function and add a number of things without changing the interface. So that means the user can keep using the same function, even though the function has grown considerably by adding new keywords. One of the great things about keywords is that we can use multiple types. For example, with border color, I have this RGB color in here, but I can also use a string like purple. Uh, we don't need this open box for now. So when we run it, now we have a purple border that's spinning in our circle. This also means that we can have one declaration for our drawbox function instead of having a number of overloads just to accept different types for the same parameter position. So here I have a lot of flexibility where I can use a string, a symbolic color, or just a regular RGB color like this cyan right here. Let's go back to the purple that we had. When I did the purple, I didn't really like the way it filled the rectangle. I thought the colors clashed, so I'm going to set open box equal true. So when we run it, now we have this nice purple circle without an interior. And so we can move open box anywhere we want because the keywords are just really not order dependent. You can just kind of ad hoc, add things as you think of them and not worry about where the keywords are since you can put them in any order. So this shows some of the advantages of using keywords. In the next video, I'm going to show how we can take the C-Quartz example project and then change it so that we can use them in our own project pretty easily.